This is a new section that came out of feedback from last year's uh, stuff. And um, what I'm going to try to cover for you here is how do you extract the value out of your company? How do you get it to be highly valued uh, at the end? So um, show of hands for those who's interested in building a, a highly valuable company. <laughs> yes, OK. So I think that's the one thing we're almost all uh, focused on. So in the software as a service model, which is the, the most disruptive model that come along in my world, in the software world, it turns out that there are some tremendous um, high values being placed on companies today. And the question is why and what influences them. So even the median here for public companies right now, this is as at uh, uh, November, uh, and the data from Goldman Sachs, thanks to them, would show you that you're getting about 5x or more than 5x revenue. So that's a pretty high multiple. Um, and, and why are we getting that? Well, the first thing that you'll see, and so especially for companies that are above that multiple, is it's through revenue growth. So companies that are achieving you know, 30 plus percent revenue growth are getting tremendously high multiples. And obviously, one of the reasons that is, is that if you look at where you're going to invest your money on the stock market today, um, it's tough to find anything that's yielding anything like 30% returns. And needless to say, uh, compared to putting it in the bank, that would be a stellar outcome. So when people can see these kinds of, of growth companies that have the potential to get leverage in their model and ultimately translate to profit, they're going to pay up for them. And that's, and that's what you're seeing more and more. But if we deconstruct this a bit more, and I'm not going to go through all of this tonight, but it will be up on the website. I'm going to put this entire uh, pack up that I got from Goldman to share with you. Uh, you'll find out that there are two key pieces to it. Uh, first of all, the unit economics. In other words, the value is subscribed to existing customers. Um, and then the, the uh, unit growth, the value ascribed to new customers and, and how you acquire them. And if we double click on that, it turns out the range of multiples is hugely influenced by two things we've talked a little bit about tonight, retention and upsell. Uh, things that we've covered already are things like how do you get the levers and multipliers out of sales and marketing to get more efficiency out of it. That's extremely important. That drives your growth. That's some of the things we've talked about today. Things we haven't talked about today, but we've talked about in other sessions, is how big is your total addressable market? You know, what's that big potential market you're going after? If it's not big, that's always an issue. And then obviously, uh, right at the bottom line, you know, what is the profitability of your business? But these two things, it turns out, are extremely important to focus on, the retention and upsell, um, beyond just customer acquisition. And so let's talk a little bit about how important they are. Well, it turns out uh, for Demandware, who is at the top of the list list, list with 97% retention, it's one of the key reasons that they are so highly valued. Because people find their solution incredibly sticky. For those of you who don't remember what they do, they're an e-commerce platform available as a service on the web. So when companies like Hugo Boss or Hamleys in, in the UK, or uh, you know, if you're a fashion guru, uh, Barney's of New York, build their websites on this, and they create the integrations with all their back-end catalogs of, of uh, merchandise, it becomes very sticky. And if it's successful for them, they're not going to take it out. They'll live with it for many, many years. And that's what's creating this high retention rate, which of course creates huge predictability uh, in your business if you know that your customers are going to average live with you for several years. And it, of course, makes it very easy for you then to do the upsell of new products and services if you're successful in creating innovation. So it then turns out that if you look at upsell on these models, you have an unbelievable leverage. For a 2% uptick, an incremental upsell in value, you will get a 14x leverage on the valuation in your company. And why is that? Well, it's probably pretty obvious when I state it. But if you already have the customer, and you can just sell to them effectively so uh, cheaply, you're really dropping almost all of that sale right to the bottom line. And if you can do that on an already high growth company, you're effectively compounding the value of it, which is why people place such huge premium uh, on companies that have multiple products and services they can upsell. That whole Russian doll packaging that I talked to you about, this is the result of it. It's, it causes massive leverage in your valuations. So I'm not just telling you this because it's a good idea to go to market. I'm telling you it because it'll pay off in your valuation. And as I always like to say, if you know this is where you're headed, you're trying to build a valuable company, why not design this way right from the get-go? So my revised startup model for you to think about is actually not just lifetime value, but it's the entire life cycle value. And it's not just cost of acquiring customers, it's cost of acquiring and re-engaging them. So this is uh, up there on the website if you want to get more detail about it. But the net of it is you want to think about the entire life cycle in which you engage with a customer. 
and how long that can be, that's about your attention. And what are the things that you can do to um, obviously take cost out of during that period, uh, re-engaging those customers and upselling them new products. And the more effectively you can do that, the higher value your company is going to be. And so the life cycle value and the cost of, of acquiring and re-engaging and retaining your customers is really the two uh, key metrics, uh, really the two key metrics to spend time on. And again, for those of you who um, have been here before, what we're really talking about here is, is the same as the gain pain. Uh, it's, you know, what's the gain you can give customers over a period of time and what's the pain you can take out of selling it to them in a low cost way. So in order to make that work, there are a couple of things you've got to think about, and I've highlighted them already during this evening, but you've got to spend time thinking about how supportable is your product? Is it very expensive to support? Because if it is, that's going to add to your cuck. Um, is it difficult to service, and do you need a lot of professional services to handhold uh, in the ongoing life cycle of the customer? And that will take, the, obviously, the, the costs up. Put it all in, in uh, one chart for you so you can see it. There are really two views of the same principle. You've got the monetization view for us on lifetime uh, LCV and CARC, but for the customer, their view is what's the gain they're getting and what's the pain that you're causing them in terms of actually adopting this. So that whole concept, for those of you who are here for value proposition, fits exactly with the same model. And it's all about gaining multiplication of the upside and taking cost leverage out of the cost on the downside. So why I say this is so important as a startup is obvious. As I said, if you know where you're headed, why not start as you plan to finish? Now, when people ask, well, what does that practically mean? I've struggled to always get this in um, a form that is just a diagram without using examples. But the diagram I've come up with that people seem to like is a simple one. It's thinking about this product life cycle. I start with a simple cycle. See products, try them, buy them, fly them, and then they ultimately die if they're not successful. So what this typically looks like is a very short cycle if you, for example, download one of those apps that we say doesn't work. It's just gone. And that could be minutes long, literally. Uh, so that's obviously not the experience you want. And if you did have that, well, all the development cost is you know, immediately just on the wrong side of the balance sheet. And you've got no life cycle value coming out. So you know, it's, it's how companies lose money and go out of business fast. But what if you could extend this? So what I encourage you to do is spend time thinking about how do you get them up the C try buy ramp really quickly, as quickly as you possibly can? And then once they're up it, how do you re-engage them and get them into an extended life cycle to repurchase stuff from you? And that's where all of this evening's tools come into play. In the software world, what these are is things like, how do you use the web to get people to find you with things like search and keywords, SEO and, and SEM? How do you use things like open source so people can try you for free? and actually go and scratch their own itch and extend you and do whatever they need with it? How can it make, you make it possible for people with slippery products to buy you in the fashion that we were talking about that's low cost, easy to install, immediately works with everything that you're already using? The more you do that, the more they'll move up this ramp really quickly. And then once they're actually using you, why sell them everything up front? Why not let them buy on demand? That's what software as a service is all about. They buy you as they use you. That's why these business models become so disruptive, because people are paying for value as they get the value. And that's what software um, as a service has done to effectively take out all the cost associated with what used to be that on-premise install and so forth. And as I told you in this uh, session this evening, there are many ways to do this. But think about that Russian doll packaging concept as a way in which you can break up the value. So again, customers consume what they want when they want. And now, if you create this as a subscription model, you'll also encourage your customers to instead of paying for everything up front, be getting value over time, and you'll enable your business to have this naturally built-in cycle, which brings your customers back around to you every time you deliver a little bit more value that they pay for it, that you deliver a little bit more, and then you ultimately use that as a basis to go and upsell them. The beauty of this model is this, which is obviously if you're engaging customers effectively and they trust you, they're going to want to buy more from you if you can deliver more value. And all of that effectively is at marginal cost, potentially of zero, if you're keeping that relationship tight. And that's why, as I said, in, in that leverage of, of 14x that comes out of upsell, designing for this upfront is what will build a highly valuable company. So in the end, what I'm hoping that you're getting a sense of is that you can actually design for a short, low-cost customer acquisition and retention cost. And you can get quick payback. You can get an extended lifecycle value. 
And the net result of that will be an extremely valuable business. And if you don't believe me, you just have to look backwards 20 years and you will see the following. When I started out in this industry, software was installed by IT. It was customized on a very expensive level. It had very infrequent upgrades. People usually found it to be so proprietary that they wouldn't even try doing anything with it. You had um, basic extensions like people, uh, like SAP came out with something called BAPI, which only the Germans could ever create or understand. Um, and it was licensed in a way that you paid for everything up front. So you really had tremendously long sales cycles associated with this, which so huge cost of customer acquisition. This is the model that used to exist in our industry just 20 years ago. None of that exists today. We're in a place where people buy stuff on the web for free. They, they demand that it be you know, self-service. They don't need anybody coming along. They don't want people installing for it. And obviously, they're expecting to be able to pay for it as they use it. And when they do, they'll take a subscription, which usually in, in uh, today's world is, as we said, creating a very predictable business model and a very highly valuable one too. So this is an example of exactly what's happened in the software industry in terms of a fundamentally disruptive and much more valuable business model. So even though none of you here are probably going to want to go backwards 20 years, go forwards 20 years and think about your next opportunity to come up with a set of highly disruptive and highly valuable business models in this way. And I guarantee it will help you build tremendous value.